TFT is about to go through one of the biggest changes of the new set because we're buffing just about everything that hasn't been able to make enough mayhem, whether that's champions, augments, or traits. One of the biggest changes is how they are going to be nerfing a lot of items, and they're going to be introducing a brand new game mode. I was able to try the new game mode out a little bit, and it gives a new twist on TFT, but let's go over the buffs, nerfs, and adjustments, and we'll go over how they may or may not change the meta. So first off, we have buffs in Bastion, Chrono, Eldritch, Fairy, Hunter, Mage, multi-striker, shapeshifter, and sugarcraft. I'm most excited about the shapeshifter buffs because I did try out six to eight shapeshifters during this patch and let's just say I only tried it once. I am a bit surprised by Sugarcraft. I'm guessing they're going to be buffing for Sugarcraft a little bit. And then Fairies, Eldritch, and Chrono definitely need a little bit of something. Jace, Namzi, Twitch, Zig, Soraka. Most of these make sense. I think Namzi 2 is really good, but I've never really seen a Namzi 3 ever. Cassiopeia at 2 cost. Yep, she's been kind of ignored. Hecarim, Swain, Vagar. That's a little interesting because I thought these three champions were all pretty solid, and then they're buffing Briar. Vex, Gwen, Nami, Morgana, Milio, and Zarath, and Shivana. Perhaps some of these buffs are made because some of the items are being nerfed? I've noticed a pattern so far. Most of the champions being buffed up in the later costs are ability power champions. Let's see if that is true. Next up, we have our 21 augment buffs, nerfing Nasus. Yeah, he's just the best tank. Even after his first set of nerfs in the B patch, he's still very strong. And then 7 augments along with the items we talked about earlier. They're adjusting Arcana, Portal, and Pyro, and then reworking the Dragon Spirit Augment, which was averaging 5.37 in the last patch, so it definitely needs like a little bit of work, you know? Uh, rotating Shop Infographic. All right, they're going to be rotating some people. That's going to be in the little Treasure Realm thing. And then now on to Talker's Trial, which is a new PvE mode. So the challenge is to survive 30 rounds, and the rounds are stuff that you haven't really seen before. I tried it out a little bit. It's kind of like a puzzle mode of TFT. So if that is of interest to you, definitely go ahead and try it, and let me know how your runs kind of go. Finally, we have the large changes. Large like the reroll Namzi shaped hole in my heart. Okay, so they are going to be working on reroll Namzi as I was kind of guessing from before. So Arcana, High Arcana Emblem Base Damage Amp is going to be buffed across the board, and then Arcana Emblem Damage Amp per Emblem is going to be nerfed. So this is going to make having your Emblem Arcana Champ more usable without having a ton of Emblems. Before, like, you typically only do this when you have Flexible or you just get a a bunch of random spatulas but now they're lowering that requirement a little bit arcana hecarim ad is going to be buffed at four and five arcana and then zarath true damage per charms is going to be nerfed yeah the zarath one was just by far the best late game arcana obviously it sucks in the early game but once you get a bunch of charms rolling there's nothing quite like it bastion armor and mr is going to be increased at eight bastion Makes a lot of sense. When I first saw this in the infographic, I was a little bit surprised because I thought Bastion was fine, but yeah, 8 Bastion makes a lot of sense. 2, 4, and 6 were probably fine. Chrono time freeze. Duration is going to be increased by 0.5 seconds. Chrono 4 bonus AP up by 10, and then Chrono 6 being bumped up by 20% attack speed. I do hope to be playing some Chrono comps in the future because I think all the units are very cool. Zillion actually is like one of the best support units. Karma had her time to shine, but really only with two chrono. And then of course, Camille, very cool unit to watch. Eldritch AP per Eldritch Champion star level being increased by two. Eldritch seven, many eyed beast base health being increased by 100. That should be a pretty big buff. Seven Eldritch is going to be the most common Eldritch in an Eldritch comp, but it definitely needed something because I, I think it was unplayable without School Mascot. Fairy Crown Damage Amp is being buffed up at six Fairy, and then Fairy Queen's Guard Armor is going to be increased by 100 health, and the MR is going to be increased by 10. So they're really buffing six Fairy, which is going to be the most common Fairy breakpoint if you are going that comp, because getting to nine is a little bit difficult, and hopefully we could see some cool Callista comps from that build. Fairy Eternal Monarch's Crown at nine Fairy is going to have the 25 stack damage amp increase from 15% to 50%. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but there's this Mort Dog clip where he had nine fairy and he lost to some like Syndra 2 board or Syndra 3 board and he couldn't believe it and he said he was going to do something about it and he's doing it now. At least I think the clip was from him. One of my friends told me about it. And then next up we have Honeymancy B's 357 being increased from 36 to 9. So 5 Honeymancy and 7 Honeymancy are being buffed up. Hunter AD 154070 is being increased to 1545 and 80. So they're buffing all the vertical traits. So I think they're preparing for the next patch where we're able to build more types of emblems when they introduce the frying pan because before we were previously only using the spatula. But if I remember correctly, there is a Hunter frying pan available. Hunter post takedown AD is going to be increased at four and six hunter and then encanter team ap being increased from 20 to 30 at four encanter 
mages getting an AP buff at seven and nine mages. I actually thought that five mages needed the buff. It felt a little weak to me. You really only played it in the Vagar comp, but you definitely do need to buff up seven as well because I've not seen any seven mage builds when it probably should be a thing, right? Multi-striker extra attack chance is going to be increased. At five multi-striker, that should help their mid game out a little bit. Portal bomb base damage is going to be decreased at six and eight portal, but the flag bonus is going to be buffed at those same stages. Meanwhile, the portal snacks heal is going to be bumped up across every level. So I have to think, is this a buff or a nerf? Obviously, the bomb, I think, was the most impactful spell. Maybe because it was the most visual. The flag is only good if you have a lot of units out. Like, if you get flag first, it's obviously really nice because you have a ton of units that benefit from it. But I felt that the bomb was always really consistent, especially since if it hits their backline, your Ezreal and Ryze often finish people off. Pyro team attack speed per Cinder is going to be 1% per 4 and is being changed to 2% per 5 stacks. Overall, that is going to be a buff but the pyro attack speed is going to be nerfed across the board. So this is better as a support trait now, it seems, rather than focusing on the actual pyro unit. So I, I assume like two pyros gotta be better after this, right? Pyro execute threshold is being dropped from 12% to 10%, and then Shapeshifter HP is going to be buffed up at 4, 6, and 8 Shapeshifter. One thing to note about Shapeshifter HP is that they triple this bonus after they cast their spells, so 30% to 35% is actually like a 15% increase rather than just the 5%. Sugarcraft AP and AD 12, 25, 35 is being changed to 20, 30, and 40. And then Sugarcraft bonus treat breakpoints is being increased at every point after the second one. So it's a nerf to the treats, but a buff to the actual trait. Theoretically, this should make it easier to hit the breakpoints since you'll be winning a few more battles, but it's going to take a bit longer to kind of get those cash outs. Warrior damage amplification slash omnivamp is being nerfed at 4 warrior. Yeah, the 4 warrior comp was decently popular in the past patch. But let's see what they're using for the units. As part of our greater goal for this patch, we're making sure the champs that were only fielded to fill out useful trait breakpoints will also have a chance at being viable itemized units and item holders too. Jace AD 50 to 55, Namzi base spell being buffed at 1, 2, and 3 star. I feel like Namzi during stage 2 is going to be a disgusting monster. Soraka spell base damage is going to be increased across the board. Spell healing increased as well. Twitch spell AD percent is going to be changed from 160 flat to 180, 180, 190. And then Ziggs is going to have his mana reduced by 10. Yeah, Ziggs was completely useless. I kind of ignored him all of last patch. He's probably like a really good blue buff holder now, though. We'll have to see. Obviously, I don't think there's going to be like some crazy Ziggs reroll comp. But in the early game, he should be more useful. Units tier 2, Ari ability magic damage is going to be nerfed finally. This is the, like the biggest change because Ari was completely bonkers. And then the true damage is going to get an even bigger nerf too. Akali kunai damage is going to be decreased across the board. And then Cassiopeia getting an attack speed buff, which is huge for her because this works both to allow her to cast faster and during the cast, she's reliant on her attack speed. So this is a very sizable change to Cassiopeia, especially since she builds Rageblade a lot. Shivana, Armor, and MR, 40 to 45. Ability damage, 45, 65, 100, plus 1% HP is being changed to 50, 70, and 110. So pretty much like the main change here is, is Cassiopeia viable? We'll have to see. You have to remember that Syndra is useless and you'd often pair Cassiopeia with the Syndra, but the biggest change is going to be this RE nerf. Units tier three, Hecarim being buffed by 50 HP, getting a little bit of a mana decrease, and then his passive charge is being increased by quite a bit for AD, and then it's gonna be reduced for AP. So they're making him more of an AD champion than an AP champion, because he's also getting a big AD percent cleave increase as well. So Hecarim is getting a buff to his passive reset charges and cleave AD ratio, but it'll be much more significant if you could saddle him up with AD items. So Whenever I played Kasten reroll two patches ago, he was actually very decent because sometimes you get him three star and then you drop some items on him and then you look at the damage charts and he was top DPS in a lot of cases. I'm actually kind of scared for this Hecarim buff. He might be really good. Jinx bug fix now correctly calculates bonus true damage using final AD rather than just base AD. Jinx AD is going to be nerfed to compensate for that. And same with her spell attack speed. Let's read that over here. Yeah, pretty much what they're saying here. This should leave her power neutral for the beginning to middle of the game and slightly stronger late game if she can get enough AD from her traits and items. Swain armor being increased. Swain HP on first cast increased across the board. HP on other cast also increased across the board. And then Swain damage on first cast being decreased. So he's getting stronger as a tank, which is what his main role is. 
but doing a little less damage on the first cast. I think this is a buff overall because Swain, you play him as a tank, not as a DPS. So if you're a shapeshifter or if you're a frost player, very welcome news for you. Vagar spell damage is going to be increased at one star and two star, but decreased at three star. That makes perfect sense. But then his AP per charm is being decreased from three to two. That's actually a pretty big change. But the three star version definitely taking a big hit. It was a very popular comp in recent times. I don't think it was that OP, but it definitely is going to be a bit weaker after this. Vex spell shield is going to be nerfed at one and two star three stars remaining the same and then now we get to move on into units tier four gwen max mana 40 to 30 wow gwen is shifting a bit to be a less bursty in her first few casts and more impactful as she gets shipping around the board with this change we'll be sure to try out blue buff and more defensive items so that she can keep stacking and collecting tips so i already thought blue buff was one of the best items on gwen the issue is that you don't build blue buff with a plan to play gwen so no one really put it on her and when you did play her two patches ago karma used a blue buff not so much gwen and you can't get that many tiers but blue buff has always been good on gwen now it's going to be even better but they do say to build her more defensively her spell damage is going to be decreased a bit her small snip damage is going to be decreased a bit and she gets fewer cast per snip so you really need to get that blue buff on her now i haven't quite done the math on this but it does feel like a nerf overall let's see how they summarize it at the top um they say it's a buff, but it feels like she's doing a lot less damage and like the stacking's a lot slower. Like, I guess you just have to have blue buff on her. I don't know. Nami bubble damage is going to be increased a little bit. Wow, Nami's actually getting buffed. That's crazy because I thought Nami was already a great unit. She was more used as a support with three mages to complement a portal build or maybe in like five or seven mages to complement Vagar. I guess Eldritch wasn't really played and unless Nami is strong, you don't really do that. But they are buffing like the Eldritch thing. So I'm very surprised by this Nami buff. In all the comps that used her as a support already, it's going to be even better. Nasus ability health steal being decreased a little bit at 1 and 2 star. And then now for units tier 5. I heard there are a lot of buffs here. Briar attack speed on transform is going to be increased from 60 to 75%. Briar's bite AD percent is going to be increased from 200 to 250. And then ravenous trait damage for missing HP is going to scale by 0.2% more. HP gain when fed is also going to be increased by 30. So with Briar's debut in TFT, we want to make the awe cute into an awe run. To bring back the scare into Briar, we were substantially buffing her in various ways from attack speed to base damage all the way to the power she gets when draining your tactician of their life force. This seems pretty scary. She already has AOE CC. She was lacking in the damage department. I'm not going to deny that. The fact that Nasus was meta for most of the past four weeks, while we barely seen Briar as a legendary shapeshifter, is like alarming. So I feel like this is pretty deserved. Morgana's spell damage is going to be increased a little bit at one and two star, but then increase a ton at three star. Let's check out Morgana's stats at three star because maybe she wasn't winning every game. I don't know. She has a 1.09 three star average placement did she really need the buffs I, I don't know i guess if we compare her to the other legendaries like is she even the worst one i mean she's towards the bottom but apparently zara 3 is only a 1.17 who's beating those boards i guess other three star legendaries right milio is getting a mana buff from 30 to 130 to 40 to 120 and then milio spell damage is being increased at one two and three star zara spell damage is going to be increased at one two and three star as well and then the following zarath ascendant charms have received buffs check the charm sections for more detail chariot judgment the lovers the sun and the world so milio is already one of the better support units that you can run randomly because he just gives items to everyone so if you have a bunch of upgraded units without any items or you can't afford items Milio is a great unit to kind of add in, and this definitely makes Milio a lot better to splash in. Is Fast 9 going to be back after these changes? Maybe people do Fast 9 a lot in this patch. Let's look at the augments. Combat bandages, one threshold is being increased from 50% to 60%. Exiles, 25% HP shield to 20%. Yeah, Exiles for some reason has been performing really well recently. I don't really know why. It wasn't like this in previous sets. Item ladder has been disabled due to a bug. We'll re-enable it once the bug is fixed. Keeper shield 160 to 145, pumping up initial attack speed 6% to 8%. Yeah, this was a pretty weak augment. Most of these changes make sense. Augments gold, a golden quest, and overperforming reward output has been updated. Are they talking about the Diana payout? I got Diana payout one time from a golden quest, and like you just can't lose. My entire board was one star except for Diana two star, and she just 
killed everything. I, I, I like tried rolling for upgrades. I didn't hit. It didn't matter. I still won every round. So I wonder if they're nerfing that. They don't really say much over here. Ascension can no longer appear on 2-1. Ascension damage amp 50% to 60%. Avenge the fallen bonus stats 18 to 20. Yeah, these were underperforming for sure. Same with this one. Clockwork accelerator attack speed 6 to 9%. Didn't they buff this before? But it still needs more buff. People still were not clicking it. Combat bandages to HP threshold 50 to 60. HP restore 250 to 600. I think combat bandages was bugged. I, I read somewhere that it doesn't work after a certain stage or something like that. I, I forget the exact details. But I wonder if that's related to this. Or maybe those are just one-time occurrences. Deja Vu plus Galio gains a two-star Galio. It's being changed to gain two Galios. Rework Dragon Spirit, gain a Dragon Claw. Champions who are equipped with a Dragon's Claw gain 100 HP and 10% durability. So you no longer can farm items from it. But you get a pretty strong unit here. That's like a pretty decent buff. But it's going to be treated sort of like the other item augments where it just improves the item rather than have some sort of like goofy effect. Flexible health per emblem, 25 to 10. Yeah, this was a completely bonkers augment. Long distance pal stat share, 20 to 22%. Metabolic accelerator has been removed, really? Do they talk about it here? Metabolic accelerator has been in a tough spot with Magic and Mayhem's high stakes gameplay moving to the augment space. Instead of giving it a buff, it would need to be viable. We're opting to vault it for future sets. Okay. I always liked this augment because it was fun having like my little legend roll around a little bit, but it isn't like some sort of game changing augment. So Molten Caramel Plus gained two rumbles instead of a two star. Potions 201 Witchcraft AD and AP gain is being buffed from 20 to 25 percent. Pumping up initial attack speed 8 to 10 percent. Spell Blades 150 percent to 120. This augment's only really good because the champions in the meta use it really well. Like before it was Zoe, Karma, now it was Ari. But since we're nerfing them, I wonder if this needs to be nerfed. Maybe it was still doing well in other random comps. That's my only guess there. Sweet Tooth plus Nunu. Instead of gaining two star Nunu, you only get two. Three's Company, three cost granted being buffed from four to five. That's pretty big. You get 15 gold now with potentially usable champions. Worth the wait, round delay being changed from two to one. And then now onto Prismatics. Anger issues. This has always been an awful augment. I really want it to be good though, because it's pretty fun and pretty game changing as an augment, which I kind of like because it kind of forces you to try new things. But it's getting an armor and MR buff of five. I still don't think it's going to be that great, but it also depends if the champions in the meta even use Rage Blade well. Maybe in a Cassiopeia build, it could be really nice. And Cassiopeia got buffed. Blossoming Lotus 3, crit chance 10 to 12%. Final Ascension base damage amp 15 to 20. Final Ascension ascended base damage amp 45 to 50. And then Giant and Mighty max HP. This was a auto take augment for almost every comp. When it really only should be taken if you need the tanky stats, right? It's being nerfed from 5% to 4%. Going long initial gold 10 to 15. Hedge fund gold buffed by 2. Invested plus plus gold 36 to 45. Level up initial XP 8 to 12. Wow, this is very sizable. Level up is really only good in high econ portals. So if you ever get like gold subscription, scuttle puddle, things like that, level up is absolutely insane, but it's horrible on everything else. Pumping up three initial attack speed, 10 to 12%. Tiniest Titan gold per round one to two. Tiniest Titan plus gold per round one to two. And then Tiniest Titan plus initial gold 15 to eight. Let's look at Tiniest Titans a little bit. I'm on the website teamfight.lol. And then I'm gonna go to augments, type in Tiniest. And plus was doing better than the regular one. But this is a pretty sizable buff. That's like a lot more gold. So we'll have to see. Like it's probably really good on stage two, I would assume. Core items, Adaptive Helm, base AP 15 to 10, Bloodthirster, base AD and AP 20 to 15, Blue Buff 20 to 15. Oh yeah, they're nerfing everything, right? Crown Guard Shield value 30 to 25, Deathblade nerfed, Gargoyle Stoneplate nerfed, Giant Slayer nerfed, Gwinsu's nerfed, Ionic Spark, Last Whisper, Nasher's Tooth, Rabadon's Death Cab, Red Buff, Static Shiv, Steadfast Heart, and Steric Gauge. Let's see the reasons why. Items are providing too much scaling power for champions than we're currently comfortable with. We're lowering the less viable base stats of our stronger items to lessen the impact of items, especially when you combine three strong ones. But we're keeping the unique outputs of core items intact to preserve their identity and keep their use cases consistent. Our goal here is to move the state of items slightly closer to a point where those who have a full build aren't as extremely far away in terms of power 
from those who have no items. Makes sense, like I always have complained that TFT, you really only care about the units you itemize. Most of the time it's just one main tank and one damage dealer. So hopefully this kind of spread things out a little bit across the board. Radiant items, they're lowering the power of our radiant items that have also been nerfed above with a few exceptions for our three worst performing ones. So that's gonna be Adaptive Helm, Blue Buff, Bramble, Crown Guard, Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, Hand of Justice, Ionic Spark, Jeweled Gauntlet, Nasher's Tooth, Rabidon's Death Cap, Wow, 50% to 30, these are pretty big nerfs. Bloodthirster, Hextech Gunblade, and Static Shiv. So I know that the Radiant items don't do that well, right? The Augments, they're like pretty average. 4.52, 4.56, 4.65, 4.72, 4.61. It really depends on the meta, whether they're good or not, because some champions use Radiants better than others. Like if you have a multi-carry comp, Radiant items become less important. But if you really only care about one unit, Radiant items are more important. But this is a pretty big string of nerfs over there. Artifacts, Corrupted, Vampiric Scepter is going to be actually buffed. Isn't Vampiric Scepter Warwick already really good? They're also saying to try Prowler's Claw Nyla. So if you look at Vampiric Scepter Warwick, it has a 3.9. If you make him a 3 star and give him 3 items, it's a 3.76. Did it really need buffs? I guess you have to hit everything, right? If you hit everything, of course you're gonna do well. But that seems really strong. Fishbones, attack damage and attack speed 35% to 40%. Gold collector 20 to 30%. Mogul's mail, base HP 150 to 50. Yeah, this item is so stupid. Like, you just take Shimmer Scale Augment, you get Mogul's mail, and you just win the game. Or not win the game, but at least a top four. So this nerf is more than deserved. Prowler's Claw, AD 40% to 50%. Prowler's Claw, crit chance 30 to 50%. And then now onto support items. All support item health reduced from 250 to 150, Knight's Vow excluded, and apparently support items were overperforming. I only thought that the support golems were overperforming. If we go back to augments, type in support over here. Yeah, support golem 4.08, 4.22, oh, stationary 4.35, but then support cash 4.57. But I guess you only take support cash if you're really looking for a specific one. But yeah, the golems were completely bonkers with this. I guess, yeah, you should probably nerf them, right? Charms, we're adding a few new charms. So, Magic Mirror, 2 gold, gain a 1-star copy of a random champion you fielded last combat. So if you're playing an expensive comp, that's going to be pretty good, but this is only offered in stages 2 and 3. It's still good though, if you don't have many upgrades, like you pretty much auto-take this, right? Stage 3 and 4, Starless Shield, 1 gold, next combat grant a 300 shield to your 1-star champions. Comfort Food, gain 1 player health, gain 2 more if you lose the next player combat. Scrappy, 4 gold, next combat, 2 champions without items, gain a temporary completed item. Phantom Artifact, gain a temporary artifact for one round. So I want to, oh, finally, they removed Artifact in I was about to talk about that. It's one of the only charms I almost never click. All threes gold cost two to one. All fours gold cost four to three. Assembly gold cost 10 to 12. So this is not as good anymore. It was just like free money. It still is free money, but it takes so long to pick up everything that it might not even be worth the two gold that you get now. I think they're 14 one cost units. Conjure Emblem, gold cost 15 to 12. Moonlight Ritual, gold cost 2 to 3. Summon Dragon, 405 to 315. This was always OP, but it cost 12 gold. It's just like a guarantee a win in the late game. Not guarantee, but pretty close, right? Ultra Ascension, gold cost 1 to 0. Ultra Ascension, time delay, 25 to 22. It always felt good when your guy gets like the Ultra Ascension, but I sometimes would skip this because I don't think it's going to trigger a lot of times, but now it's like auto-take, right? It's 0 gold. Ancient Ritual, Eldritch Attack Speed, 10 to 20%. Busy Bees, 15 to 25%. Queen's Gambit, gold cost 2 to 1. Quickening, 2 to 1. Piece of cake, sugars gain 10 to 25, wow. Portal hopping, portal gold cost 2 to 0. This one, I swear to you, this one gives you a random portal unit. It only ever gives me Zoe. Has anyone gotten anything good from this? I swear I picked it because I've been playing a lot of portal lately, maybe like five times. I think I got Zoe four of those five times. I don't know what it is, but Pyromania, Cinders granted 8 to 10. Spitfire, gold cost 2 to 1. Supreme Arcana, gold cost 2 to 1. Is it Arcana or Arcana? But damage, amp, and durability increase from 15 to 20%. Zerath, Ascendant Charms, Chariot of Gold, cost 5 to 3. Judgment, gold on win, 8 to 12. Judgment, XP on lose, 12 to 20. Holy cow, this is an insane good late game augment if you're trying to reach the next level, you know? Lover's gold cost 4 to 2. The Sun, 40 to 32. This one gives you an artifact and support anvil. I think it's pretty decent in the late game, but at 40 gold, it's pretty expensive. But oftentimes, gold doesn't mean much in the late game, so I would always buy this, but now I guess I'll buy it even harder. The World gold costs 36 to 30. 
This one gives you a bunch of four cost units and then small changes, small like the number of attempts it'll take me to beat chaos mode of Talker's Trial. JK, it's hard. Vanguard durability while shielded 10% to 10, 10, 15. Units, Syndra ability damage is being buffed. Okay, I was waiting for that to happen because when I was talking about the Cassiopeia changes, I was like, why would I play Cassiopeia when she wasn't even near the meta before? And her partner, Syndra, complete garbage, but they're buffing her a little bit. They're saying it's not gonna be like the opening patch, but hopefully it should just be viable. Maybe you could actually play her in Eldritch. I saw in the early parts of last patch, my friend playing three-star Syndra. I was like, oh, you're still playing that. Is it good? He was like, I don't know. And it was like stage four. He was around like third or fourth place in HP with a three-star Syndra already. I was like, hmm, maybe if you hit it in the right spots, it's still good, right? Nope, he got seventh that game complete garbage, but maybe with the changes, it could be back. I think a good spot for Syndra is literally if you meet all the conditions of getting her early with a good item on her and allowing her to stack up. Like in those cases, I'm all for Syndra being strong, but if people are just forcing Syndra, then yeah, obviously that's too much. Mordekaiser's spell shield is being buffed up at one star and three star. Nico ability self heal 18% max to 15% plus 100. That should be a buff, right? I forget how much her max HP, actually her max HP is a lot, right? But I guess this is good on the early game parts of Nico, but worse in the later parts. Shen ability durability is being increased at 2 and 3 star. Rise number of targets 446 to 336. Is this a buff or a nerf? So Rise targets 4 units, but he deals the same amount of damage, right? When he targets 3 units, but when he targets 4 units, he's a better applier of red buff and Morello. When he targets 3 units, he just kills things faster. That's actually hard to tell. Like, I have no idea if this is going to be a buff or a nerf, actually. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Tarek's 3-star ability now deals damage in a 3-hex radius up from 2. Also, when it targets 4 units, sometimes he just snipes people in the back line. So it'll still happen with 3 targets, but just not as often. But again, like the people in the front should be dying faster. Maybe it's a nerf. This sounds like a nerf after I say everything out loud because like red buff and Morello were very popular on rise and he's just a worse applier of it now, but different builds will emerge and you'll probably just build them a little bit differently. By the way, did they fix the static shiv interaction on rise? Apparently if you put static shiv on your rise, it would magic shred your own units. So we'll wait for that in the bug changes. Augments, AFK 18 to 20 gold, finally. It used to be originally 20 gold, but then they nerfed it, but I don't know why they did it. So I'm glad that they're buffing it back to 20. Placebo, attack speed one to 2%, hilarious. Cauterize can now appear on 2-1. Hunting Frenzy, Execute Threshold, 12% to 10%. Keeper Shield, 240 to 230. Yeah, Keepers was really good. Giant and Mighty, Max HP, 5 to 4. They already said that. Bug Fixes, Flexible and Trait Tracker are now mutually exclusive. They should have been already, right? Oh, they said it was supposed to be in the last patch, but the fix didn't go through. Maybe it did now. Built Different and Trait Tracker are now also mutually exclusive. Patience is a Virtue tooltip reworded to more clearly indicate its effect triggers every round. Too mad. Anger issues no longer gives two rage blades when you make a mana item on a manaless champion. Wait, what? I didn't know that was a thing. Never on time. Krugs can no longer be summoned to the board after combat is resolved. Late bloomer can no longer summon units onto the board if your bench is full. Eternal growth no longer grants permanent health to non-shapeshifters that start combat next to shapeshifters. This augment was complete garbage last patch and this looks like a nerf. But they are buffing shapeshifters, so it should be better through that. Needless VFX, needlessly large gems VFX no longer mistakenly plays when the holder dies before 15 seconds. I actually tested this with my friend because I had my needlessly large gem holder in the front line like a while ago. And my friend was like, why are you doing that? Doesn't it die and not give the bonus? I was like, no, I saw the animation go off. So I think I am getting the bonus even if it dies. And it was like, really? I was like, yeah. So we go through a fight, the user dies, and we see the glow up animation after 15 seconds. And I was like, see, I told you. And then he was like, right click your units. I right click them and I was like, oh, I just got tricked by the visual effect. So that's why it's always good to kind of test things and don't trust everything you see. You know, you have to like right click and see the stats and verify that way. Because I thought I figured something out. I was like, wait a minute, you don't need to have it live because I saw the effect go off, but I didn't bother to check at the time. But luckily I was in a call with someone and they made me test it and then we learned something after that. Fix the bug where the user would see a flash when scouting from House of Golden Rabbit to other arenas. I just switched from this arena, man. Like they finally fixed all the bugs with this arena. What was it like one or two years after it came out? But now it doesn't matter. I, I use the new bunny arena now. So leashing the tooltip, unleash the beast tooltip now correctly states that it gives 60% attack speed. It was already doing so. All right, so pretty decent sized patch. I'm most excited for Cassiopeia. I think that's gonna be great. Shapeshifters, I think is also good. Did they ever actually change Multi-Striker? 
I don't remember seeing the changes. So extra attack chance is being buffed up at five multi-striker. Oh yeah, it was very, very small. So that just improves the multi-striker mid game. I think the seven multi-striker Kalista builds are actually pretty solid. Kasdan, obviously viable in certain spots. And then like, there must be some reroll Hecarim build. That's a pretty sizable buff to Hecarim. I'm actually looking forward to playing Hecarim a little bit. But the item changes are probably the biggest changes so far. We'll probably be seeing a lot more importance to upgrading your whole team rather than just your key units. But we might also be in some sort of Fast 9 meta because they really buffed a lot of the legendaries quite a bit. And Fast 9 was starting to come back in the last patch. It wasn't quite up there. You'd only do it situationally. But maybe now you could do it much more often because like all these five cost units got like disgustingly buffed. I think some of their support units also got buffed too. Like Hecarim got buffed. He's good with Bastion and Arcana for Diana and Zerath. Nami got buffed. She could be used with either Eldritch with Briar or Mage with Nora. So that could be one of the possible comps that comes out of this patch, Fast Nining. But let me know what your thoughts are on this patch. It was a very, very big patch, so literally anything can happen. Like Chrono Builds, I'm pretty excited about. We haven't really played Fairy that much either. Eldritch, like we played before, so I'm not too excited about that. Like obviously, it's fun to do, but a little bit difficult. Maybe people might fall into the trap of going for very deep vertical traits because it seemed like they buffed a lot of vertical traits, but oftentimes those comps are only good if you have an emblem for that specific comp. So we'll really have to wait and see. Luckily on Friday, I'll be releasing the meta snapshot as I do every single Friday for the past four or five years now. So hopefully I will see you all in that video if you wanna learn more about the comps that will be good in this patch. But that's gonna be it for me today. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.